Let's talk Reuteri and separation. So you've just completed a 36 hour incubation of your Reuteri starter and you remove the lid to find a cottage cheese like texture and a rather strong cheesy taste and smell. You were expecting creamy yogurt but found this instead and you automatically assume it has failed and that you've done something wrong. Well, I'm here to suggest that nothing has gone wrong and this is simply a natural part of the process when fermenting the Reuteri probiotic in milk. I know there are loads of videos on YouTube with tips on how to make the perfect batch of Reuteri yogurt. Some of these include very helpful info, but there are very few people in the community discussing the dreaded separation of Reuteri. So in today's video, we're going to delve into this topic in a lot more detail to help shine some light on it. I would really like to open up a discussion so everyone can share their experience. Just before we get started, if you're interested in this topic, be sure to like and subscribe to our Lavelli Life channel and leave a comment below. I'll be posting more videos on this subject over the coming months that you also might find helpful. If we have not met, my name's Joe and I'm the founder of Lavelli and we sell one of the best featured yogurt makers on the market for making Reuteri fermented dairy. We sell our yogurt makers all around the world and have been doing so for many years now. Over this time, we have built up a great deal of experience and knowledge from our own experimenting with Reuteri and of course, from talking with our amazing customers and community. So I feel we are well placed to tackle this topic head on. So let's get into it. Many who end up with a separated batch call it a fail. I hear this word a lot. There are a lot of opinions about this. Some say it's fine and some call it contamination and so on. Stick around to the end of this video where I'll show you some separated batches and do some taste testing so you can see what I'm referring to. In my opinion, separation is not a fail at all. It is just a normal part of the process and we can take some lessons from the cheese making process to better understand it. Separation of curds and the whey or the liquid and the solids is a defining step in the cheese making process. Regular cow milk used in cheese making will start with a pH of approximately 6.6. .6. The proteins in the milk, which are called casein, float around in little stable protein clusters. These stable clusters keep the milk smooth. In cheese making, milk usually forms curds and whey in two different ways. One way is with rennet, an enzyme that cuts the milk proteins and helps them form into a strong curd. The other way is by adding a culture or bacteria that produces lactic acid by consuming the lactose in the milk, much like yogurt making. As the acid builds up, the proteins lose their stability and clump together, forming curds and whey. Now here's the key difference with yogurt. Traditional yogurt cultures like Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus bulgaricus also make lactic acid, but this happens in a more controlled way. They acidify the milk more slowly and form a fine, stable protein network. That's why traditional yogurt sets into a smooth, creamy texture and holds in the whey instead of breaking the proteins apart. So you do not get as much separation, but a smoother, creamier texture. Lactobacillus reuteri is different. It does also produce lactic acid, which drops the pH of the milk like traditional yogurt fermenting, but it doesn't build the same stable protein network. Once the milk reaches a pH of about 4.6, the protein structure can collapse and the whey can leak out, creating separation into curds and whey. That's why at times Reuteri ferments can look more like cottage cheese than traditional yogurt. So is there a way to make our Reuteri smoother and more yogurt-like? Well, yes, there is, but all the tips in the world will not remove the possibility of separation altogether. Reuteri can still be unpredictable at the best of times, remembering you're not making traditional yogurt, but fermented dairy. Now let's look at proteins. Milk's ability to hold together during fermentation depends on its protein content. When you increase the protein level, 
you're essentially giving the milk more building blocks to form a stable network and remain smooth and together. With more proteins present, they can link together more tightly as the acidity rises. Extra proteins act like sponges binding water and fat. So to help increase the protein level, we can use whole milk or full fat milk and add some powdered milk for extra protein. The type of cow milk you use can also help. Protein in milk is called beta casein. It generally comes in two main forms, A1 and A2. A2 proteins form slightly different structures when the milk acidifies and is fermented. They tend to make a softer, finer network of proteins compared to A1. Therefore, fermenting with A2 milk can help create a smoother, more creamy Reuteri batch and reduce the chance of separation. Many of us will use a prebiotic fiber like inulin when we ferment our Reuteri in milk. A prebiotic is basically another food source for the Reuteri probiotic to consume when fermented in milk. It is an additional carbohydrate source to the lactose in the milk. This is added to support stronger bacterial growth. However, it can potentially lead to a faster rise in lactic acid as well. More lactic acid could mean a faster drop in the pH, basically speeding up the fermentation process, which can increase the chance of separation, especially over a 36 hour incubation. So if you are getting separation, try decreasing the amount of prebiotic you are adding, which will decrease the food source for the Reuteri bacteria and help create a more balanced fermentation. The incubation time for your Reuteri is also important to consider. It may not always need a full 36 hours. For example, if you stop the fermentation around 24 to 28 hours, the pH won't drop as fast, which can help to reduce curds and whey from forming and prevent separation. Even with a shorter fermentation, you can still achieve plenty of bacterial growth and multiplication. I am fully aware some insist on fermenting for a full 36 hours to maximize the amount of Reuteri probiotics in a batch, and many of our Lavelli recipes recommend this as well. But this is still a topic of debate, maybe something we can discuss in a future video. Next, let's consider the temperature. Traditional yogurt strains are heat tolerant. They actually thrive at around 38 to 44 degrees Celsius or 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. At those temperatures, they acidify the milk quickly, but still build a stable protein network, which is why you get the classic thick, creamy yogurt texture. Traditional yogurt strains will generally ferment for around eight to 10 hours. Reuteri is a little different. It prefers a slightly cooler range of about 36 to 40 degrees Celsius or 96 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, the acid develops more slowly. This gives the milk proteins time to form smoother networks instead of rushing straight into curds and whey. If the temperature drifts too high, the bacteria can work too fast, dropping the pH level too quickly causing the proteins to collapse and create separation. Keeping the temperature steady and a little lower helps hold the structure together and can help create a more yogurt-like texture. So try fermenting your Reuteri at 36 degrees Celsius or at 96 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. While the lower temperature may help reduce the chance of separation, it is important to remember that the Reuteri probiotic is fine to ferment within its preferred temperature range of approximately 96 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It will not die if the temperature goes slightly over or under 100 degrees Fahrenheit, as some suggest. So what happens if you follow all of these tips and still get dreaded separation with your next batch? Well, don't stress. This happens simply because the proteins in your milk have become destabilized, clumped together, and forced the liquid way out. While the texture might not be as enjoyable as thick creamy yogurt, the separated batch is still packed with the same healthy Reuteri probiotics and all of their health benefits. You can even use some of the separated batch as a starter for the next one. About two tablespoons is enough. 
you might find consecutive batches settle down and separate less as well. So next time your Rotorai yogurt comes out looking like cottage cheese, remember it's just milk proteins responding to acidity, the same science behind cheese making. It has not failed. As I like to say, embrace the separation. So let's have a look at some separated batches and see what you may expect if you get separation with your Rotorai fermented dairy at home. We've got four different batches here. I'm gonna go through and taste test each one of them and give you a bit of feedback on how the texture has come out. As you can see, each one has separated a little differently. The first one here, you can see has separated approximately 50-50. So you've got the whey on the bottom and the solids on the top. The top is reasonably solid, but we can still scoop out some of the curds. And if we taste test this, obviously the curds are really thick and creamy. It does have a slightly chalky texture, I would say. And then if we try the whey as well, it does have that really distinct, slightly cheesy Reuteri flavor. So while it has separated into curds and whey, I would definitely not say it's contaminated in any way. It doesn't taste bad or off. It's simply just the texture probably won't be as enjoyable as one that separates less and comes out more like a thick, creamy yogurt. Next up, we have a batch that, as you can see from the outside, looks rather good and is very much different from the other three. If we scoop out some of it though, you'll see there is a lot of liquid on top and underneath you will see the curds just like that, that have formed. So we'll taste test this one. Definitely a more yogurt-like taste, no, sorry, texture. The taste is probably a little less cheesier, which most people will find batches that don't separate or won't come out as cheesy but it does have a bit of a zing to it actually whereas this one didn't really have a zing or a fizz the next two we have as you can see or especially this third one here has had quite severe separation so unlike the first one it's probably about 20 percent curds and 80 percent whey and as we dig into the top you'll see the curds are really, really almost honeycomb or cottage cheese-like. So let's taste this to see what it's come out like. So the texture, to be honest with you, is not amazing, but it's not terrible. The taste, however, is still that Reuteri, you know, rather cheesy taste that you get. So this batch here, along with these two, even though the textures aren't amazing, they'll still be packed with those healthy probiotics that we're looking for when fermenting the Reuteri probiotic in milk. If we have a quick taste of the whey as well, which is also packed with those Reuteri probiotics, it's actually pretty good. Definitely, an acquired taste and not really like homemade yogurt, but not a bad taste. Once again, definitely not off or hasn't gone bad. Just more the texture isn't as enjoyable. One thing to keep in mind when you get a separated batch like this one in particular, when you take it out of the yogurt maker after your 36 hour incubation, the smell will be rather overpowering as it's just come out of the yogurt maker, still warm and just finishing up the fermentation process. Many people at that stage think, oh wow, the smell's overpowering, it's failed, I'm gonna tip it down the sink. What we've found is that if you put it in the fridge for about 24 to 36 hours, the batch will obviously cool down, but it will also settle down in the flavor and the taste and the smell. So this one has been in the fridge for a couple of days now and like I've just done, I've just tasted it and it's fine to eat. Well, once again, the texture's not amazing, definitely not a failure and you'll still get the health benefits that you're looking for. 
Let's have a last look at this fourth batch. And one thing we have a few customers say when they get separation is that it's pushed the lid up. And obviously, you know, we wanna know why that's happened. Well, when a batch separates, it actually expands. So as the whey separates from the curds, it can push the batch out. This one here was just under two liters or two quarts. So there was a decent gap between the lid and the top of the batch when we first made it. But as you can see, it's pushed up the lid. Um, a lot of you know, residue on top of the lid as well. Sometimes when it expands, it can overflow into the water bath of the yogurt maker as well. This isn't the end of the world. You can just clean it up after. With this particular one, what I'll do is clean up the lid, clean up around here, and then store it and put it in a drink or smoothie if you're not wanting to eat it straight with its current texture. Let's have a quick taste of this one as well. Very hard curds on top, and you can see the whey come through. I'll get a bit of curds and whey this time and try them together. That's actually not bad at all. Actually quite a le little less cheesier than these two and actually has a really nice balanced flavor to it. So not disappointed with that at all. The texture doesn't look great, it's expanded, but you can still enjoy the batch, like I said, in a drink or smoothie if you're not wanting to eat it as it is. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you've found this video informative Please do leave some comments below to let us know your thoughts. If you've had a separated batch, how you've got on with your Reuterai fermented dairy, would love to hear from you. And I'll finish off by saying, embrace separation. Don't look at it as a failure. It really is just part of the process and you can still enjoy the health benefits, even if you do not get the texture you're expecting. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again in the next video.